Real men. I don't count my days of years, no. I count every milestone that I've achieved in the potential of what God put inside. When responsibility called, they said yes. When the demands of greatness beckoned, they said yes. When society asked if there are any real men left, they said yes. That's what they call being a man. You must make it a life. He has made a promise by his very word. You shall not plant and not eat the fruit of it. Because grace is laboring in you. Men Gather Season 7, 20th April 2024, at the Kololo Independence Grounds. Fenero. Make manifest. Manifest TV. Welcome back to the Men Talks Season 3. We are continuing to discuss on uh, issues to do with the priest according to the theme of this year. This year we've been looking at the priest, um, priestly consecrations, okay? And so in the previous session we looked at the priest in a home. Today we're going to look at the priest in the marketplace. Thank you for tuning in. Please invite someone to also tune in and follow us during the discussion this evening. We are live on all our Manifest TV platforms, on Free to Air, Go TV, Manifest TV, YouTube, and also on the Fanero app. <coughs> Men Gather Season 7 is also here, and it's happening on the Saturday, on the 20th of April 2024, at the Kololo Independence Grounds. All <coughs> men are invited. I am Pastor Brian Mwesige from Fanero Means International, your host, and I, I'm here with wonderful men of God, to discuss on the topic of the priest in the marketplace. First of all, I'd like to thank God so much for the man of God, Apostle Grace, for the vision of men gather. And also, I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in to be a part of this, to learn, to hear what, what we have to discuss today. And also, I'd like to thank God for the servants of God that are here with us, for giving us your time to be able to discuss this topic of the priest in the marketplace. So allow me to introduce to you our panelists uh, in no particular order. I'll ask them to introduce themselves. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Brian. Uh, my name is Alan Tazenya Tize, uh, Fanero Ministries International, uh, and a civil servant. Okay, well, praise God. Thank you for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. Pastor Rohi Bright, my name, a minister in Fanero Ministries, and a business person as well. Wow, praise God. So these are not only ministers, uh, in the church, but they are also they have places in the marketplace. Okay, and um, allow me to start this way. Um, many people think that um, you know the marketplace is just business as usual. You know, they don't realize that there is a spiritual side to how things are done in the marketplace. And I believe that this topic of the priest. Uh, cuts in and brings us to, uh, to the understanding of how to control the spiritual atmosphere, I believe, in the marketplace. So, as we discuss this, uh, maybe let me ask firstly, who is a priest? Who is a priest? Mr. Alantese, who is a priest? Thank you so much, Pastor Brian. Uh, I think I'll start from this angle. Many a times when we hear the priest, many look at <coughs> the things he or she is supposed to dispense. Mm. But understanding the priest is coming from an angle of responsibility. responsibility. But that responsibility is going to start from the understanding and the relationship you have with God first. Your revelation of him, that that revelation is actually put out there 
and hence you dispense the responsibilities from the, from the revelation you have with God. So that means a priest, <coughs> many of the altars and the priestly works we saw came from the revelation people had and the relationship they had with God. Now, from that revelation and the understanding of God, they went on to build altars, they went on to do their priestly work, but from that revelation. So, mm. a priest is a person that carries a revelation and certain understanding with God, and through that understanding, responsibility is dispensed through him to the people around. Wow, 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 that's beautiful. Pastor Roy. Thank you so much, Pastor Brian, for the question, and uh, Minister Tizi, for your explanation. Uh, the priest, in the Old Testament, if we build up from there, was someone who used to serve in the tabernacle. Mm. And uh, primarily, he represented men before God, okay. in the before God, in the presence of God. Now, if we advance into the current times or under the covenant we are in, understanding that the old was a shadow of the new, is that the priest currently is someone still who stands or dwells in the presence of God, mm -hmm. ministers to God, and also to men. Okay. Yes, that would really be the, the, the understanding of a priest. So any man that has a responsibility, and in fact, every man in this world should have that responsibility. He has that burden laid on him that one, <clears throat> he has to stand before God on behalf of men. Okay. Exactly. So any man born again or not? Or only those who are born so, again. So again, a man, so if you remember, um, I can draw clarity, the Bible says, seeing then that we have a high priest, um, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who's passed on into heavens, let us embrace our profession, speaking of priesthood. Now, any man who is after the order of that Christ, mm. okay? That's the one we are defining now. Oh, they are, okay. if, if you look at priest, if you're defining priesthood, it's diverse. It's, it's quite in mm. different angles. We have priests who do not ascribe to God. Okay. You know, yes. yeah, yeah. who don't ascribe to God. But when you talk about priest or priesthood, something spiritual comes into concept. Mm. So you're talking about spiritual being. Yes. Men who, who, who relate with the physical, but also connecting from the spiritual. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so what I'm picking here is that um, anyone who's born again is in that office of a priest. Anyone who's born again yes, because in ide of a priest. ideally, uh, uh, let me just build from there. If you remember uh, how this comes into play, when, mm. when God, the Bible says, is um, He has made us priests and, and kings, kings unto exactly. God. Okay. In the Old Testament, the Bible says He spoke to Moses and told him, "I want you to say these words to these people mm. that I want you to be." Um, a, a, a kingdom of priests mm -hmm. okay so that means the mind of God before was that every man should stand in the right Office. of a priest ah, that okay. is that has been the mind okay. of God okay. of course uh, so many things happen in there that we cannot get into now but that is the mind of God that every man should stand remember in the Old Testament one of the responsibilities of a priest is to offer sacrifice okay remember in the Old Testament every household was given the responsibility to offer their own rams mm. that before God. Mm. You see, so it's a responsibility upon every man. Mm. Yes. So priesthood is a is a place of responsibility given to man. Yeah. A place where, um, like you said, from your revelation of God, and then you show, you showing it forth to the world. Okay. Uh, what I'm picking from what you're saying, um, it's 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 a responsibility. It's a place of responsibility. Now. Mm. Concerning the marketplace, in the context of the marketplace, this has to either do with maybe your business or your career and things like that. What is the role of a priest in the marketplace? Mr. Alantis. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Brian. Uh, I think like the way you've, you've brought that differentiation that marketplace in a way, it could be your business. It could be that you're an employee or an employer, different uh, setting. The roles come, let me start maybe from a business angle because I'm also a <coughs> businessman. Mm. I've understood my role as a priest, as a person who sets the praying or the spiritual atmosphere at my workplace. Wow. That means every person that is going to come to my business has to understand, first of all, the principles and the God we prescribe to under that business. Mm. That every person who join will understand that if you're going to work at Devoted Metalworks, you, by, by 6.30 a.m., 
we have an altar to pray. Okay. So oh. I'm setting the praying atmosphere in, mm, in, in mm, the marketplace. Mm. Some of the people may not be born again, but now they are catching up. Because okay. in there, as we set the praying atmosphere and the spiritual setting of the client, of, 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 the, of the business, they are responding. <coughs> so as a priest, I'm setting the atmosphere. I may mm. not be there physically, but they know at this point, this is how we do things. So part of my role regarding business is setting the atmosphere, the atmosphere praying for the business and telling people giving them a guidance of what we prescribe to mm. when it comes to the workplace where i am employed i think even before this is my opinion before you even affect the wider environment it starts with you mm. because the bible says that we are men who are re we are read by all men okay. that means a man to understand the authority of the priesthood i carry they're going to look at my life Mm. and say how am i handling my life yes because men are reading you the way you're handling your work the way you're <clears> responding <throat> to situations the way you're responding to challenges the way you are handling things and they'll say but there's something different mm. uh, to give this example i have an office mate i usually sit with okay uh, she's been away for a while but we've sat for the next two three we will s sitting together for the next two three years and every time she'll come in office she'll be there's this 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 this, this and i stay calm and I'll look straight because in front of us there's always this chair, brown chair. Mm. And I always look to that brown chair because whenever I look at brown chair, I'm telling him, we are going to sort that issue by prayer. Whenever mm. she comes in, she's sweating like brown chair. So now from that environment, the next people in the next office know there is a brown chair, meaning there is prayer in that office. Mm. So we are setting the environment from one person to another. But the point will start at the workplace where I'm employed, it starts with you. How are you handling things? How are you handling work? Mm. How are you handling the bosses before you even speak? men and women and reading you oh. and then they will respond wow so way. so you're saying that um that more than just uh the <coughs> place of prayer your life as a priest is an altar is an altar yeah pastor roy anything to add to that uh, um, um minister tiz has brought up something very beautiful <coughs> setting the atmosphere mm. uh, there's a portion in the bible that says that the role of the priest in leviticus was to keep the altar burning keep the altar the burning burning oh. make sure it never goes out mm. so that speaks to the environment how do you create that environment to make sure that the place is saturated by the presence of god and uh, you know people don't understand this that usually there are many things you avert when the presence of god is available please uh, explain on that because uh, it's important for our viewers to understand why why is it important to have a certain atmosphere yeah w why is that important one yes. this is uh, important to know that a workplace what we call marketplace um, is a place of exchange mm. a lot is happening mm. um, like you said earlier on people th just think it's a secular place but it has spiritual bearing mm. you have people from different walks of life <clears throat> yes. someone will come to your to work within the office and uh, perhaps they had a very bad night they're going through depression and they're about to kill themselves mm. you know and um, uh, sometimes would only leave this to church until they go to church you know mm. but like you said for example <clears throat> we, we've had prayer altars at work you know and in there people are going through a thing uh, they're going through a life a stage a moment a phase and uh, when you are you know in your daily devotions having a prayer somebody you through a word god speaks to someone's life <clears throat> You see, and, and which, if you go back, which was a very primary place of a priest, mm. that a, the, the, every priest is, is known of carrying the voice of God. Uh, I think somewhere in the Bible where he says that, um, <clears throat> that the priest shall take these words from God. Mm. You see? So you're the mouthpiece of God. The mouthpiece of, God's, mm. uh, of, of God. Remember, men were ordained to live by what they hear. Mm. So if that voice is not available, if men, if there's no voice to speak mm. for them, remember the Bible says that through faith, uh, 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 it says faith comes by hearing. By hearing. Okay, mm. so if that voice is not available, the, uh, there's a portion where the Bible says that where they minister to the Lord, mm. priests, where they, because as the, the Holy Spirit spoke, mm. you see, that that you give God the place to intervene within the affairs of men. Ah, you see, yeah. Wow, wow. So people don't. You, you've seen. I'll tell you. I've, I've. I know places where people go to work and their lives are destroyed. Mm. You see, the environment is toxic. I work in the HR space, and uh, you know we have people who call you and they tell you, you know, I want to leave this organization because it's toxic for the me. Environment is toxic, yeah. You know? There is no consecration of that place. Mm. You see, but. 
as a priest, our role, like Minister Tizi said, is that you, you create that environment. And I usually tell people, you don't have to be in a place of leadership to do that. Mm. You see, you can, you can influence from the spirit world. And, and that's very key, very key to understand that primarily we, legis we legislate laws as priests from the spirit world. From the that I may not be the owner of the organization mm. or the company, but my altar can speak to influence the decisions made in that organization. Well, yeah, yes, Pastor Brian, if, yes, if yes. I may, add, mm -hmm. I've been in a scenario where you're just working in the <coughs> office. That means as a priest in a workplace, you have to be so alert to pick certain instructions regarding the workplace. Mm. That when you're praying, you're not only praying for your success, but the entire organization, but also the influence that organization has on people. Mm. There are certain situations will be in, you're walking in and the spirit is like, this and this deal is going to be signed, it's not yeah. right. Yep. You just have to get a few minutes, go and pray over <coughs> that. So and so is actually about to die. So that means as a priest, you, uh, the Bible says in, 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 in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that the revealed things are for us and Lord, for our yes, children. Yes. But when you look at the word children, represents nations, represents the workmates. That means as you go before God, you're not only presenting you, but you're presenting the workplace, the environment, the leaders, such like that when they make those rules, those deals, those uh, those MOUs or memorandum, mm -hmm. memorandum of understanding and mm -hmm. agreement, they are actually in line with certain expectations God has for you. So it is like he's saying, Pastor Rohi, that you legislate, you kind of guide certain things by prayer. And it requires you to be alert, not only because sometimes when we get in there, people are looking at money, mm. looking at promotion. <clears throat> but I've been in a situation where God is telling me, actually, I don't want to move you from this office to another until you sort this issue. Wow. Wow. Until you sort this person, wow. until you get in this situation, mm. I need that person in this kind of line because you're not here not only to make money, but you are there for people to see that actually I am in this building because you're there. Wow. Mm. Look, can uh, I yes, just add yes, something please, small? Please, please. <clears throat> so what he's talking about mm. is ideally giving direction to men, you see. And uh, um, the scripture I earlier referred to where he says that the priest shall take the law from the lips of God. God really designed that men shall live by instruction. Mm. You see, you remember somewhere the Bible says that he made known his ways to the children of Israel, but, um, but to, uh, him, uh, his yeah, works, but, he, he but then to Moses his ways. His ways. Yes. His ways. Mm. So there's, uh, you have somebody who is, has this great aspiration and perhaps they are growing in this one area of their life. You see, because we stand there as counsel. And then you as a priest, God has given you a mandate, especially if you are maybe at the zenith, you are the lead of the organization, to know the, 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 how God has called these men. Mm. Everyone that has, remember, uh, again it stated that the, every priest was ordained for men. Ordained for men. Ordained for men. Perfect. Mm. You see, so that means God has put you in that place as a candlestick, as a light, a light. as a guiding light for mm. these people. Mm. Mm. That I'm able to tell you, well, as much as this is what your aspiration is, I feel the Lord is leading you into mm. this direction. Mm. Mm. You see, so that He shows you His ways, mm. not just the works. Yes. You're able to see His where His is He way. leading. So you stand as a man that directs men. Mm. It, now that's just the anger of. Of, um, of, of you know telling your employees but what's the angle of the business where are we going mm. you see direction direction vision. yeah because you see the mm. people who will and I believe this to be true that you know for you to make money you need to answer the questions of men that means the foundation of your business is based on the needs of men, of men. but how wow. about oh, if the wow. need is not revealed yet mm. for men mm. you, 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 you get the point. <coughs> mm. so you, you are that responsibility that God has put upon you and remember that's why we said you know it has to be very spiritual mm. it has to be like the Bible says that old men were men of old were carried by the spirit when it talks about when they were inscribing the scriptures mm. that they wrote of things that have not that that had not happened yet but yet come, came to pass mm, mm. so in how do you stay relevant in you how does your organization stay, stay relevant, relevant in years to come you see, remember many years ago when COVID um, hit this nation, mm -hmm. the funeral of the ministry, we began live streaming way before, maybe a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. Little did we know that those years later, maybe two, three years down the road, church was going to be relevant online. online. But it takes a priestly eye to be able to, to, be able to pick that kind of thing, wow. project the future mm -hmm. and lead men in that direction. Wow.
uh, um, you know, you're, 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 you're bringing out so many things and so many questions actually are coming up from what you're discussing, Amen. what you're saying. But what I'm picking is that um, the, priest, uh, the presence of God is not only for church. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. The presence of God is for the world. Uh, yeah. uh, and, we're, and we're those who bring the presence of God to our workplaces, to our businesses, you know, so that God can impact and change lives. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something that um, you said and I think I'm going to build a question from there. Now, this is also something else you said, which I read the question from. Um, you said something about giving direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what is the right way? Um, if, if you're not, if, if you're not the boss, okay, you're not the leader. You're not the one in charge. Uh, and maybe you have a vision from God concerning the business, concerning the work that we're supposed to do it like this. What is the right way to approach the king? And approach the king. The know. boss. Yes. Oh, the, you're you're not the king God or the king no, your boss? The king your boss, yes. Because you, you, you're not the owner of the business. But as a priest, you've had God concerning that business. You're, as a priest, you've had God concerning that career. What is the right way to approach? One, uh, the two things. Mm. One, suggestive. Okay. Two, through prayer. Mm. Because as in the nature of God, God... God has he comes to the the the, the prophet who was the, the the one in the dry in the valley of dry bones and he asks him a question do you believe that these bones can live can live again mm. God knows these bones can live his nature is he he does not impose that's his character mm. he suggests he suggests he inquires of you what mm. he knows you see so <clears throat> You, you don't impose. There's a wisdom on how to deal with these men. All right. Mm. You, you, you suggest. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, the, then the other through prayer. That's what you need to understand. Every priest is known of prayer. Okay. And wow. this is what you need to understand. Mm. Mm. The Bible says that um, the heartfelt prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, it has tremendous power, dynamic in its, it's working. working. Mm. Mm. You need to understand that. One prayer cannot fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If prayer hallelujah, cannot fail. And hallelujah. When you talk about a priest, there's where when you read the scripture, every time the Bible refers to a priest, it talks about the offerings of prayer. Mm. That mm. of course maybe we could get into that yes. later. That's scripture sacrifices. Mm. But you, your your number one weapon is prayer. Mm. You enforce laws through prayer. Ah. You, yeah, you understand that mm. you are in the. Please world. repeat that again. Read again. Yeah, you mm. enforce, you legislate laws, enforce laws through, through prayer. prayer. Yeah, mm. you are in the world of men, but men represent spirits. Mm. You mm. see, mm. remember when when um, this lady, the wife to uh, to Abraham, uh, was tired of Hagar, mm. and she wanted him to, she wanted her to go. Yes, Sarah. Mm. And then Sarah, mm. she turned to the Lord of the man, to the God of the man, mm. and the God of the man spoke to the woman. So you you do this through prayer. spiritual warfare, which is prayer. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! You, you, you legislate it through prayer. Yes. Now, Pastor Ryan, if I may add something, mm. because as as <coughs> Pastor Rohi was saying, that means that actually, like I said in Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine, mm. where I'm emphasizing it, it says that reveal things are for you and for a nation of your children. Mm. The heart you take into prayer has to accommodate the organization and the leader there exactly mm. and as you pray for them there will be that opportunity god will create that will cause that boss to want to hear your opinion on that issue oh exactly wow, wow that wow, actually wow, on wow. this i think let's consult him yes yes because yes. you are praying for him you are and god has given you this direction and like pastor Ria said you can't impose mm. you can't impose and mm -hmm. sometimes even the opportunity to suggest may not be there because in some of these organizations the ranks are so many yes, and maybe yeah, you exactly. could be you could be, other side mm. and by the time you write you may not be able to influence mm, mm. but then at that particular day when you're passing that corridor if i may use that example and the permanent secretary say but we are discussing on this what do you have to say wow, wow because wow. you carry the direction by prayer mm. and you've influenced the organization wow that's that's deep. Deep. That's very but, but like, yes, the yes. other way is mm. you know every business if you are employed they will hire you for profit not in the sense of you must make um, a positive change Impact, yes your work into the business <coughs> must be tangible and felt mm. so uh, my personal testimony so i would be at work very early in the morning and i take time to pray and as i began to pray people would come and you know my i would not invite anyone i'd just be having my own personal time mm. and people would see me pray 
we left with the results and then one day i i didn't call any man one day they wow. just walk into to me and say can we pray wow that my team joined me and said mm. can we pray mm. you see mm. so mm. so because they understood if this man has a result that means He's connected yes, to certain they, source. They're, they're seeing the relationship yeah. between yeah. your prayer, my prayer and, and the my, results. And my results yeah. So it's important that, that, um, that um, it's, it's more than just praying, but being able to apply yourself to different principles that will bring that a certain fruit yeah. for people to see. Otherwise, they'll knock your God. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Physician, heal thyself. Now, there, there's something else that, that um, Mr. Alantes had said. We're, going to, uh, we're about to go for a break, but in just in a few minutes, mm. you said something about. Um, God told you not to leave a certain office, you know, because you had to sort an issue, something like that? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah it was coming from a certain mm. angle that actually you are in this office and you feel, I think for you it's time to move on. Mm. And then God is saying, no, when I put you in that office, it was not only for you to occupy that office and do particular work, uh -huh. but there was responsibility yes. I expected you to have covered uh -huh. in this period before you move on. Now, th that brings me a, brings a question, you know. How does one serve God at the work? Because many people, you know, the, the drive for some people is money. Yeah, money. I go to a place, uh, as long as it's paying good, you know. But then in the Bible we see that um, in the place of service, yeah. you can either serve God or mammon. Yeah? <coughs> you cannot serve two masters. So what's the place of finding purpose at your workplace? What's, what, 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 you know? Finding purpose. Can you just in just one minute? One minute. Sh shall we pick pick on that? But but please uh, share with us the place of finding purpose, serving God. I, I'll I will quickly start from the from the point I highlighted that actually as a priest, your life is going to speak louder before you even speak uh, the results and and your life will speak. That means serving God at your workplace is first of all giving yourself to prayer, but also to the principles that make a man. Mm. That as you do that already. People are recognizing and seeing the difference, like Pastor Rohi has been saying, that in there, it's beyond money. It is where you're going to make a decision and say, I will not take this path, but God is guiding me here because in this path we are winning these souls, we are winning this other person. So it, it comes back to your relationship and then God guiding you in the thing you're supposed to do at your workplace, mm. that your, your purpose will be defined beyond money. Mm. Otherwise, someone will ask, won't you take the pay? No, the pay will be given unto you because you are working. But you're looking at the bigger picture. Why are you there? Beyond the pay, can I influence someone to Christ? Mm. Of the 20 years I've been in, in, in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, how many people have I influenced towards mm. God? Mm. It, it's, it's beyond you. It's beyond so the having pay. How a many spiritual people mind. have I counseled? Having a spiritual mind. A, merit, a spiritual mind. Yes. Way beyond actually your pay mm. and beyond actually the ministry, but the bigger picture of the kingdom because of the Great Commission. Wow, wow, wow. Pastor, is there something you can add just in yeah, one minute? Maybe just a minute. Mm. Um, how do you serve God? He's touched prayer. But I, I would also say this, you can only serve God when you touch people. When you touch people. People, okay. The, the place where your work shifts from just um, completing assignments mm. to serving men. To serving men. Man of God, we are going to pick it up from there. We are going in for a break. Um, please tell somebody we are on fire. A lot is being discussed, a lot of wisdom is being shared here. So we encourage you to please if somebody hasn't yet tuned in, please tell them we are discussing the priest in the marketplace. So see you in a few minutes. Supernatural. It's uplifting. It's spiritual grounding at its best in television. A place for your spiritual nourishment daily, 24-7, 365 days all year round. Experience the Word of God back to back with the great lineup of programs for you, your friends, and family.
Breakfast TV und Star Times Channel 241. Go TV Channel 819. Free to air Channel 19. Or better still, for your convenience, you can watch Manifest TV wherever you are on your mobile phone using the Fanero mobile app. Manifest TV. Christ revealed. of years. No. I count every milestone that I've achieved in the potential of what God put inside. When responsibility called, they said yes. When the demands of greatness beckoned, they said yes. When society asked if there are any real men left, they said yes. That's what they call being a man. Oh, you must such make it oh, in life. Oh, oh, oh. He has made a promise ah, by so his way. very word. Mm. You shall not plant oh, and not eat the fruit no, of it. Yeah. Because grace is laboring in you. Men gather season 7, 20th April 2024 at the Kololo Independence Grounds. Fenero, make manifest. Live on all the Manifest <coughs> TV platforms that is free to air, Go TV, Manifest TV YouTube channel, and the Fanero app. Also, would like to let you know that Men Gather Season 7 is back and it's happening at the, at the Kololo Independence Grounds on the 20th of April 2024. Entrance <coughs> is free of charge. Yes, uh, we have been talking about um, the priest in the marketplace. The priest in the marketplace. So um, we had said something, we, we had broken off, before we went for the break, you were talking about how to find purpose and how to serve God. How to serve God. In the marketplace. Yeah. And you brought out something that uh, it's important that uh, the place of serving God is when you switch from completing from assignments, completing assignments to, touching to serving lives, men. Touching to touching serving lives. men. Yeah. Please build on that. Yeah, because on that. you see, um, at the core of God's heart, is men. Mm. It's the lives of men. If he could not withhold his only son, he mm. gave his best uh, prized possession to death for men. Now, that means, remember, it's, it's the Bible says the priest is taken from among men, ordained for men mm. pertaining to the things of God. <laughs> That means everything you do and stand and represent as a priest has to impact the lives of men. Now, at my workplace, how do I translate that into the purpose of my work? One, knowing that whatever you do, the Bible says, do as unto the Lord, unto the Lord yes. <coughs> not as unto men. Mm. But the reward of my work is not really for men. There's a... There's a Another portion that says, talks about the Levitical priesthood. It says, their portion shall not be among you. Yes. It says, when it comes to the priesthood, as you work, well, money is important, but it should not be the focus of your service. Of your service. Why? Because your reward is God. Mm, mm. Now, <clears throat> if I understand that, that my reward is God, if I have God, the maker of all things, the owner of all things, that means I have everything. Mm. So, when I'm working, my work is not inclined to what I'm going to get out of it. But am I touching you? If I'm a doctor, you know, I'm, you, you know uh, what, there's a lady I know who lost a child because a doctor striked one day 
and was not able to be available in the night mm. to help mm. you know because mm. they had maybe issues unresolved issues with their workplace a life was lost a life was he, lost. You, in that place you misrepresent <coughs> priesthood mm. you see mm. Mm. now you are to stand in that gap for the lives of men mm. <laughs> knowing that your reward is from from the god Lord. so i'm working i know but maybe what you pay me like our apostle grace usually says that your job description only asks you of five things sometimes ten things out of out of the abilities deliver. that god has given to you mm, you mm, see mm, now mm. if i limit my service to the description i am limiting the expression of god through my life so when i'm there i am serving as one that is serving god to touch the lives of men mm. you see i'll go an extra mile to know that if what i'm doing is going to touch the life of a man i'll do it and honest, honestly speaking these are not just words we are saying this is the life you live mm. that mm. your work will touch the life of a man mm. you see mr alan is into you know uh what his kind of uh, craft you know gets and everything metal works and that there's another man you'll go to them and they'll give you maybe something of little quality, of poor quality. Mm. And you put it there, as you're rolling the gate, it could fall, cram on a man, just because they want to maximize the profit. profit. You see, but he is as a, as I a you. priest. I hear you. I you, you. I see, hear you. He has to go, make sure that what he's giving you mm. is adding value to you, but also keeping your life. Mm. You see? That's what, you yeah. uh, see, I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot from what you're saying. <coughs> I'm seeing the place of... Um, when you talk about serving God, I'm seeing the place of having a spiritual mind, like you yes. said, yeah. the place of understanding that God is your source, yes. you know, the place of understanding that um, um, the balance between uh, finishing assignments or uh, and mm -hmm. then touching lives, the lives ha yeah. having the mind of changing lives, lives yeah. Yeah. changing lives, yeah, mm. and the place also of understanding that you're doing work unto God, unto God, yes. Unto God. Is, is, is there anything you want yes. to add to that? I wanted to add something mm. uh, and to give a practical example to Pastor Rohi what mm. was saying. Because the other part of our priesthood will be shaped in how we respond to circumstances. Let me give this practical example. One how of those we days we respond to circumstances. To circumstances. Okay. One of those days I'm seated in my office and I get a someone in the highest office that is permanent secretary. Mm. And immediately the spirit told me whatever they are calling for, it is not good. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the spirit, how should I respond? Mm. Then he told me, go and get your best suit because the meeting was the next day. So I called my wife, prepare my best suit, everything. I didn't know what we were going to discuss, but I knew it was not good. Mm. But when, I, when she prepared, the next day I was, you know, very smart, prepared my, uh, my notebook and I was on time and I got into that meeting. And the, the, the boss asked me to speak about myself and how long I've worked for the, for, for, for the organization. The way I spoke was as if I was being promoted for the next interview. Wow. So I spoke, I introduced myself, and it's like, but do you know why you're here? Mm -hmm. I had a feeling. So because he saw the was introducing myself, and he's like, okay, we're calling you here because of this and these accusations. And i like, I know those, but I know the accusations, but actually when I had them, I forgave. And he looks at me and said, but these guys took you through too much hard. They took me through, through so many things. I said, but I forgive, but I, I will only respond to these questions because you are the boss. I'm going to explain the details. But if I had the prerogative not to, these are the matters we forgive. So he wow. looks at me wow. and tells me, okay. Wow. <clears throat> and he's like, do you have the documents? I, I said, I do have the documents. Mm. But I said, I, I, why are these documents not on the file? I'm like, the way things work, when those documents get on the file, they will be leaked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know people who use those documents to fight, but I can produce them. Mm -hmm. So after that meeting, immediately I get out of the meeting, the Spirit tells me, I prepared you to go in that meeting the way Joseph was called out of the dungeon, because the moment he was called out of the dungeon, he, he didn't know whether he was going to be promoted, wow. whether he was going to be slaughtered, because the accusations were there. Mm -hmm. He took a shave, prepared. That's when the scripture jumped in my spirit. Wow. wow. Actually, I told Joseph to take a shave, Put on a new garment. He didn't know whether at that point he was going to be executed, but he had to prepare himself as person going to. And and just as wow. yes. powerful, wow. yes. ordained for men. For men. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You see, not against men. For men. For men. For men. That that means he, what he's talking about. He was a typical representation of the character of the Christ. Forgive them, for they know not what they're mm. doing. You see, wow. and and these these things this happen. Amazing. These things happen in our workplaces, mm. and you can't avoid them yes, because yes, yes. you live in a world of contention, mm. and things mm. happen. You know, mm. and I 
to have a couple of testimonies into into that in, um, in that effect but what he's saying is very powerful that as a priest on any day of your life you stand for men yeah that's it remember that, that was a, the, the the purpose of the priest to offer the sacrifice of sin mm. on behalf of men wow you see so you never choose so you as a boy you know as the head of the organization as a you never you never find yourself standing in a in a position where you are talking gossiping about someone mm. you know <clears throat> then you have got now you have switched you are against the men as a priest a true priest you are all taken from men ordained for men for men you are ordained pertaining to the things of god that mm. means you are there to re what he did he showed them away you see so that is really the mind of the priest Wow, wow. Yeah. this is so powerful. Yeah. Then uh, maybe just something else maybe for you to add. Uh, uh, as, as you're talking, I you know I was picking other questions. Somebody may be asking, okay, um, right, I understand my role as a priest, but then <coughs> for that person who hasn't yet been employed or they have not, they are seeking for a job, you know, um, help, help us understand the, the place of, uh, you know, still in, the, in, in finding purpose, okay? Mm -hmm finding purpose like how do i know this is the right job for me and not this one here you know uh what do i consider you know or should i take this business uh line you know uh, you've said something about hearing from god um how about a scenario where you may not really hear a voice you know i telling you that go out and do this business <laughs> so uh, help us understand the place of of of, of um Priesthood in that. knowing the mind of god as to where you're supposed to work for a person who's not yet employed. Uh, uh, does the question yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah, the question mm. is clear. Uh, I, I may start from a personal experience. One of the things that helped me <coughs> was the people God has put around. Mm. I remember I had this first job and I was a young man and I, I loved it. I loved it. They were paying too much. One time my, 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 my biological father wakes up and says, you're going to this job. And I looked at the pay as a young man. I was like, no, 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 no. I can't get into the government. Pay. The pay is low. He said, you are going in there. And when I got in there, it is when I started realizing, actually, you are now working in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you're dealing with nations, and later God starts adding it up for me that now you're actually going to handle global issues and nations coming in. Wow. So wow. it was the people around That's me. Around Sometimes you. and many mm. times you're going to hear God regarding <coughs> our places or oh. the jobs to do by the people God has put around here oh. to guide you and to parent you. For me, that's how it helped me to understand. Wow. It took time. Mm. So in those confusing times where the voice is not that clear and god knows your heart he would create he circumstances through, through people through situations wow. i remember some wow. i think our father said one of those days he's seeing a, a bank advert and god tells him mm. you're going to join the mm. bank mm. if if you are alert god will find a way mm. as long as you open your heart mm. and so there are several other guiding lights other guiding lights that, that will come through oh, sorry that's what you want to th add th to that. thank you so much mm. like you said the a number of guiding lights let me just limit it in within the confines of priesthood mm. as i understand it yes. um one of the role of a priest was to offer prayer the bible calls it an offering the offered prayer mm. And really, you notice that there's no priest that, because, you see, like the Bible says, he was always ordained for men. Mm. No priest went to God with their personal need. Yet with answering the need for men, he I dealt with them. Yeah. I give, I give it, by raising Christ from the dead, mm. was not really for the Christ. The mm, Christ you would see, it profited yes. the Christ from but rising, but world. was for men, mm. for, for, the, for the world. Mm. Every priest must have the place of consecration called prayer, <clears throat> irrespective of whether you are. This is not just for the pastors. You must have an altar that speaks. A personal altar. Like and that's the place where instruction comes. Mm. I earlier mentioned that God did not design men to live by what's reported to them. Mm. You see, remember, he wanted to come and speak to the children of Israel. Okay? And he told Moses, gather them, mm. because I, have them, I want to speak to them, sanctify them, and gather them. When they came, they said, when they had him coming, they said, eh, 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 eh. No, because we're afraid of the thunderings and everything. Yes, yes. And they said, you go and let him speak to mm. you that you may come and speak to us. Mm. They passed on the responsibility of priesthood to Moses. But that was not really how God had ordained Adelaide. this thing. Mm. Well, now it is so because now it's a pattern, it has become a pattern. It, it was as, as though a law was set in motion now because that men will always go to other men, you know, to hear God's. It's as though you're trying to live by the faith of others. Mm. Mm. 
But that place of prayer is what gives you the instruction. That's why the Bible says that these ones were able to see the works of God. But because Moses, as a priest, he maintained a place of fellowship, God made known to him his ways. So how do you know the way if you don't receive instruction from him? That now speaks so much to the incense of your own altar. That's a place where you hear God. Direction. Mm -hmm. I will shock you. Because I'm in the, in the HR space yes. and I deal with believers. But you ask them, they have, some will call and they have a problem and ask them, did you ever pray about pray this about job? It. And, and you'll be very shocked how many people walk in two workplaces, take on job offers they've never had God about. They wow. only read the, the employment They letter. look at the employment letter. And what so are you, the first people, question is what do you offer? Many people primarily miss the place of asking God. Because the Bible miss, says you, you, you don't have because you don't ask. Yeah, exactly. They miss, and people do not know the danger of mm. being in a place where God has not desired you to be. You know, this is what I tell people. That really, the, with Christianity, the end does not justify the means. Mm. You see, God never intended Moses to hit the rock. But he hit the rock and water came. That does mm. not mean it was right. Yes, you yes, see? Yes. So you can be in a place where God has not really called you called to be. You, but yes. you will notice there's a lot of contention. Mm. There's a lot of frustration. Yeah. So, and many times because people don't really ask God. The Bible says, you know, does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask, ask of God. Mm. Who gives freely? He does not upright, you know, withhold back. So how many, how many times have you really brought this to God in prayer mm. how many have you you know you've gotten four offer letters mm. one is giving you you know seven times what you're earning the others maybe many will run for what is offering seven times what they can earn you see how many times have you taken this to God and said God speak to me and God because will, I need mm. purpose in this praise God I am okay praise keeping here praise for as long as there's purpose in praise this God. praise God you see praise so God. that place of he spoke about you know deriving mm. cancer from men and that's powerful the bible mm. says there's wisdom to be desired all right yes in the in, in the dwelling of the wise right. mm. you know the, the bible says um in the multitude of counselors there's safety there is safety yes. then also the voice of god listen if you're a priest god must speak god to you that's very yes. synonymous of priests mm. Mm. the voice of god the voice of he god. must speak to you and give you direction wow wow yeah. wow wow, wow. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this now uh, from from our discussion yeah. i'm beginning to see something I, I, and i wanted to um bring out a question on this matter here uh the place you spoke about um you know you're praying at your workplace and then people began to connect mm. the results mm -hmm. in your life and then they will see, they will see a correlation yeah, mm. yeah? Um, you, you have a business you know yes. in, in metalworks and all that now help us understand how we can give the best how we can stand out i'll give you an example maybe there's somebody right now uh, they've had god to start a shop okay and they open up a shop but there are other people mm. in the same place doing business. that business yeah. okay and probably they have different altars from where they you know some have demonic altars yeah. and uh, this Christian is asking himself God told me to open up this shop but I don't see customers why is it that I'm not standing out what is that thing that attracts you know is it just the too much marketing is it you know what is that help us understand the spiritual side you know to, to, of, of, of shining of of maybe of standing out at your workplace standing out uh, in your business you know yeah. uh, up, you know the oh, principles yeah. how, how do you shine how do how do you make your star shine you know yes yeah. as a priest uh, I, I may start this way um <coughs> i think psalms 55 says uh, gather my saints Mm. gather my saints of those that have made a covenant by sacrifice mm. that means for me the understanding is like pastor Rocky is saying that on the altar what sacrifice are you putting on that altar what sacrifice what sacrifice mm. sacrifice could be uh, uh, the consistency in prayer because you are saying this is an altar at, at, at my workplace or <coughs> at my business but you're not looking at it only to shine you for you but mm. to affect the entire environment yes. it's like that the person next do can come why am i saying this i had a scenario whereby we started off business and and and, and someone went divergent and when i was actually i had to leave the business for them and then god gave me an instruction even when you're starting your own go and and consult him go and consult him 
where to buy machines and not that I didn't know but then God was telling me that in the business you're starting I want his soul I want him to know me mm. such that mm. when you consult him will take you where the machines are everything but remember he has taken your business and then this man is like okay that means the altar of the business is speaking beyond actually getting money so that was one of the principles god was teaching me that i want to teach you in this business if you're going to shine out learn to depend on me sometimes when you're starting this business you're counting on the geographical location mm. which is okay mm. you're counting on so many things and then god will shock you he will get a metal workshop put it in the busiest construction site and none of those people will give you business and you're like but they are because they constructed 100 houses with devoted not getting one client until god got one client from germany on a plane and said god spoke to me to come and use you guys then i realized you can market but the altar has to speak mm. the principles to which you sub so subscribe the altar has to the speak. altar has to speak because remember our father has been telling us this is the year of priestly consecration mm. and altars will speak trust me the altars will speak differently depending on the sacrifice on the, the sacrifice. consistency and mm. whatever is being put there mm. they are going to speak mm. by different results yes. so i realize okay do i want to do metal works only do i want to just get in means of foreign affairs and work or by the time i leave and god is taking me to another place mm. their lives taken so my oath and the sacrifice i'm putting they have to speak beyond me, beyond me. and that mm. requires me to give myself to the principles that make me better that speak beyond because people are reading uh, that example I was giving that when the when the, when the boss called me and, and I was like, no, we can leave that issue. If you looked at the issue, it had affected maybe my progression and so many things. And then I realized, even in that, God was looking for a soul. Mm. And the confirmation came through, you know, when you are hurting and so many things, you're going through because of a certain persecution. And then God tells you, get on the knees and pray for those very people. And then I'm like, okay, but they are the ones doing this. He is working on you, Sacrifice. such that <clears throat> any other person and those bosses will walk to you and say, mm. but there is a God in you. Hallelujah. So the sacrifice, the principles to which you give to, will bring the business, but also will speak beyond. Mm. And actually, people will come and say, we have workshops here, but there is something. There is a time our father said that actually when a client walks, before he even gives you the business, mm. he is your client. Mm. That means you're setting the environment. Yes, the yes, person yes. sits and says, I can entrust you with 500 million. <laughs> Wow. And then you cannot entrust that 500 million with another person. Mm, mm. That's the environment you're creating, but it requires a man to subscribe to the principles that make the business. The principles. The principles. And this God from the personal relationship. Wow. We're going to come back to that. But I'd like yes. to just build a bit then move this mm. way. And, and when he talks about sacrifice, you know, we've only understood sacrifice in the form of, uh, you know, money or shedding, you know, because in the Old Testament, there had to be a shedding of blood. Mm. With the transition, we know there's a portion, in fact, that talks about to render um, our the sacrifice of uh, the, the lips of our calves. Yes, the sacrifice Cal of praise. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's a one that talks about the, the calves, calves of our lips. Of the calves of our lips. Mm. You see that you, that's your sacrifice. So, yes. Yeah. Then then he he also talks about uh, to render praise with the fruit of your yeah, lips. Yeah, yeah making yeah. confession. That, that yeah. The thing is going a different way, mm, okay. Mm, 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 but there's mm. you con you maintain a certain oh, sacrifice hallelujah. from your lips. Hallelujah! You hallelujah, hallelujah! Now, mm. but that that would mean that you must be in the place where you trust the conviction mm. that led you to begin the business. Mm. Mm. Peter is toiling the whole night, mm. and he's not catching any fish. He comes back and tells him, "Cast your nets into the deep." Peter said, "Listen, we have done this the whole night." <laughs> But because you have spoken, mm, mm, you see, mm, I'm mm, going to do it. Mm, mm. The question is, did God tell you? Mm, do you mm. trust that God told you? Hallelujah. It doesn't hallelujah, matter where hallelujah. it's going. Mm. Because if he told you, trust that voice that told you to begin. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all, with your heart. all thine mm. heart. You see, not, he says, and Lord, lean on your understanding. What he was talking about, that you may think, okay, because now, you know, uh, this is where the market trend looks like it's going. I need to plug into that and you deviate on what he told you mm. no trust in the lord thy god mm. but having said that the fact that also god has spoken does not mean that certain things are automatically going to come to yes, pass yes 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 the, 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 he has given us principles and i tell people the purpose of principles so we can predict the results that we want please if, repeat that again yeah, the purpose of principles mm. is so we can predict, predict. the results mm. that if i want two i just need to get one Plus, plus one. one all right okay. i tell people if you want to make um coffee you're not going to get um you know that you have to get water boil it up 
get the coffee powder, whatever it is, you know, and make the coffee. And you know that at the end of the day, I'm not going to have Coca-Cola. Mm, mm. I'm going to have coffee. coffee. Mm. So when he gives us the principles, you know, he has given us the principles of the time. Every now, mm. how did you just build on that, the principles? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This principle. For, for example, he, he has said, he's, there's, talks about the principle of the tithe. He said, trust me with your tithes, you see, and see if I'll not open up the windows, the opportunities of heaven. That means that when a man is given to these principles that have been stipulated, these principles, God, you see, I'll give this example. This is how I would understand the principle. That God has given you money, let's say, in the account. It's yours. Mm. The money is there. You have the money in your bank account. Mm, mm. He has said all things belong to you. Mm. The principle is that you need a card mm. to walk into and access the and money. Access, yes. Without the card, as much as the money is in your, your account mm. and in your name, so you're not able mm. to access, access it. it. But he has told you, for you to access the money, he has given you the principle, the card. Now, this is the purpose of the principles. Mm. That for access. For access. Mm. Mm. That mm. he has blessed, he has spoken a word, blessing your business. It's going to multiply. You know, sons, uh, kings shall come to the brightness of your, of your rising. Right. But how do I connect that financially? There's a principle. He's talked about the principles of the tithe, right. the principles of fast food, mm -hmm. the principles of the offering, and, the, and all kinds of giving. Mm. And if you're talking work about ethic, you know, things like work that. ethic, mm. hard work, if you're talking about the priest, every time you notice this mention about a priest in the Bible, there's a word sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice. And you know, sacrifice is not usually a thing that really excites you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's not a sacrifice. You see, remember, he tests one principle that for him to give you more, mm. you must lay your all. Mm. You must show him. He wants to bless Abraham with, he has given him the, the, the promise, he's told him, you're the father of many nations. But he says, well, I want Isaac. I want Isaac. And I, this is what I think. Abraham laying Isaac on the altar, he was not sacrificing Isaac. Mm. He was sacrificing himself there. Wow, wow, he, he was wow, giving wow. himself wow, to God. Wow, wow, wow. And the Bible says God tells, calls him through an angel, says, Abraham, Abraham. Because Abraham was ready to offer the kid. Mm. And he says, now I have seen. Mm. This is, we're talking mm. about the omniscient God. You see, why, why he needed to test Abraham through how he was willing to respond to the principles that he has set for provision. Because right after that, there is a provision. Wow, wow, wow. Man of God, we are running out of time. We're yeah. running out of, it, the conversation is wonderful. Just in, I'm, I'm going to just ask you, um, yes. maybe you won't give that in your closing remarks. Uh, yes. Just in less than a minute, what is that one thing you want to speak to somebody out there to help them understand? more deeply the priest in the marketplace just in less than a minute less than a minute in a less than a minute yes. um i'll pick it from what pastor Rowe, he said he said that actually at the end of the day a priest is going to serve me mm. so one of the principles he's talked about tithe but i wanted to emphasize one uh, that actually god the bible says does not like unbalanced weight mm. in dealing with people how do you see them you get the word because he's a god of people that we are serving men but we are serving as unto god mm. that even at your workplace in your business that person that comes before you how do you respond to them how, because you would want to cheat you want to do these things and every other thing but god is actually testing you to entrust you with more or now you hand a person how do you with them how do you respond even when the bible says that if you can't rule your spirit you want you, you can't take over city i mean you need to know that actually our priesthood is about people whatever you're going for in your closet has to be beyond your family beyond just you but for the people wow pastor pastor Roy. i'll go back that every <coughs> priest <coughs> is ordained for god mm. and two men pertaining to the things of god as a priest in your workplace the last remark is to just let you understand that you are not there for yourself you are there for the people of God. You are there to represent the counsel of God. And that should be the thing, that should be your guiding light. It should be the thing that governs your attitude, how you deal with men, how you deal with responsibility, how you respond, you know, to, 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 to responsibility, to, call, to, to everything around that space that you answer to God as a priest in that place. Wow, wow, there you have it. We have shared a lot of wisdom concerning the priest in the marketplace. 
I would like to thank the servants of God, Mr. Alan Dizzy, thank so Pastor Roy, thank you so much for sharing your heart, for sharing this wisdom. I believe that uh, we have added something to somebody. I believe that somebody has, their life has been transformed from what you have shared. And also would like to remind our audience, also, first of all, before I remind you, thank you for listening in. Yes. And also would like to remind you that we have Men Gather Season 7 happening on the 20th of April 2024 and we shall be at the Kololo Independence Grounds gets open at 12 p.m. Entrance is free and it's open to all kinds of men men from all sorts of life you are all welcome once again thank you so much for tuning in to the Men Talks Season 3 we look forward to seeing you in the next session God bless you